there are some things that happen to you first, yes. and then those that are around you. That's right. But you got to do that in spirit and in truth. Yes. All right. You got All right. to sincerely worship God. Don't play with God. You got to worship God. Why? Because first and foremost, I want you to know that the enemy, he walks to and fro, mm -hmm. seeking whom he may devour. Yes. Now, he cannot destroy a worshiper. Yes. Oh. Hope you get that. I hope you're getting this part. Hallelujah. He can't destroy someone that desires to worship him yes. in spirit and in truth. Because when you worship him, you, 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 you release the greater that lives within you. Because there is a greater that lives within you to them that has accepted Christ into your life. And so you have to realize who is on the inside of you. And so when you worship that, that which is on the inside of you, it connects to God. And it's only a connection between you and God. And God listens to the cries. He understands every tear. He understands every moan. You don't even have to say the words. You can just say, mm, and he knows what every mm means. That's the connection between worship because when you're walking in the natural, the natural cannot discern the things of the spirit. And so when you speak that way, you're speaking foolishly to those who don't have a connection. But when you have a divine connection with God, it don't bother you to lift your hands. It don't bother you to praise. It don't bother you to worship. That's why, you know, when you're looking at football and you throw your hands up, why? Because there is a connection that you have between you and the game. You know how it is, you know, you don't want to be, you don't want, you don't, you don't want to be quiet and nothing like that. You want to represent your team. You want to put that shirt on and everything because you feel a connection. And you're not going to let anything stop you. Wings can't stop you. Potatoes can't stop you. You ain't going to let nothing stop you from seeing what you want to see. But that's the mentality that you should have when it comes to worshiping your God. Amen. You shouldn't let anything stop you. You shouldn't let anything hinder you. I can care less who's sitting next to you. Whoever's sitting next to you shouldn't stop your worship. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Whoever's on in front of you shouldn't stop your worship. Whoever calls you shouldn't stop your worship. Because it's between you and God. And I'm saying, and I'm saying like this, you know what? We haven't got desperate for God enough. We're not desperate enough. You're not desperate yet. God, I guess God has to put you in a position where it's just between you and him. You can't pay bills. You can't lift your hands. I don't know what it is that God has to do to you for you to get this thing and see that. I'll let nothing separate me from the love of God. I ain't going to let nothing stop me from worshiping. I'm not going to let nothing stop me from growing. I'm not going to let nothing stop me from getting my anointing. I'm not going to let nothing stop me from walking in my purpose. I'm not going to let nothing stop me from walking in the vision that God has given me. You have to be desperate. That's right. Because even the enemy tries to take away your desperation. Amen. Even the enemy tries to take away your joy. Even the enemy tries to take away what God has for you. But you have to be desperate. Yes. You've got to have a childlike mentality. You know, I'm not going to let nothing bother or take, me, take my family away from me. Whoever comes to me, whoever tries to handle all of my kids got to come through me. Because I'm the protector. And i got to make sure that they're spiritually fit right. in this world that we are in. Right. Because I know without a shadow of a doubt, the enemy is after all that he has for me. Right. And i got to be willing to fight. And I don't know about y'all, but you got to be willing to fight. Yes. I want you to know that you're in a fight. you got to fight for your life, man. Right. you got to fight for this thing. you got to be willing to fight. Cancer, fight. Mental illness, fight. Mm -hmm. Body hatred, fight. Mm -hmm. Lost a job, fight. Mm -hmm. You gotta be willing to fight. fight. Yes. Yes. Paul says it like this. He says, I fought a good fight. Yes. Mm. Mm. So I ran my course. Yes. 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 But at the end, he realized that he was in a fight. And he was letting his compadres know that we are in a fight. Fight, say fight. fight. I want you to know that you're in a fight, man. You gotta fight for your home. You gotta fight for your sanity. Yes. You gotta fight for your peace. Yes. You gotta fight, man, because the enemy's trying to take all of that yes. away from you. Yes. Jesus says, "In this world, I come to give you life, a new life, yes. and you gotta fight for the life, man." Yes. Because the spirit, I'm telling you, the spirit of guilt is running all over this place. 
you feel guilty because you this and you went through and you going through all of this. The spirit of guilt is all over this place. But if you give that guilt to God, yes, yes, yes. God says, I have covered you in the blood and I'm not even looking at yourself in the way you're looking at you. Man, I hope y'all get this. I hope you're getting it because the spirit of guilt is running rampant in, in, in our churches. Because of what you did, because of how you look, because of the mistakes you made. But put all that stuff on the altar. Amen. Put all of that on the altar. <laughs> put your guilt on the altar. Amen. Put your shame on the altar. Amen. And continue to walk. Yes. And continue to walk. Why? Because everybody has done something. Amen. Everyone is going through something. Stop making your big bigger than everybody else's big. Yeah. Amen. Stop doing that. Because the spirit of guilt is killing, killing people. Mm -hmm. People are feeling guilty. People are feeling less, less worthy, less more than. And that is the trick from the enemy. Amen. I gotta realize that y'all are walking miracles. Mm -hmm. And this is not something that mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. This is something that God said. God says you are uniquely made. He says you are wonderful. And he says all that I created, he said it's good. Yes. Even though my body may feel a certain way because my body is changing, I have to change my diet, y'all. I can't eat some stuff no more. There's some stuff I got to shy away from, Mom. I just can't. I love pizza and I can't eat it no more. I like spaghetti. I can't even eat spaghetti no more. I got to change my whole diet, but at the end of the day, God is still good. I just have to go through a transformation. I'm not going to feel guilty no more, Abram, because I was. I, you know, I got to tell people, you know what? You go ahead and eat that. I can't eat that. Now, I felt shame. I felt kind of, you know, like, you know, you better eat anything, man. Double meat hamburger. Bacon burgers. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I used to get a child that curly fries. Yeah. Now I got to split the burger with my wife. Now I can't eat the whole burger now. Because it don't even digest well. I have to look at it a whole different way. I said, well, at least the bill is cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> yeah. The bill is cheaper. So. But we got to realize that going through the test, going through a test, everyone goes through a test. Everyone is going through. Uh, uh, you look on the news, you look on the internet, everyone is going through something. Everyone is going through. And if you really look at it, we all go through similar things, as the Word teaches us. We all go through similar things. If it's not relationships, you're dealing with money. You know, if it's not money, you're dealing with some mental illness. If it's not deal, dealing with mental illnesses, a uh, loved one is dying. You see, we're all going through similar stuff. But we walk into the church as if we got it all together. But this is the place where we come to get it together. Because God says, uh, we need to bear the infirmities of the weak. In other words, God says, I know what you're going through. As a matter of fact, it may have been me that caused you to go through some of the stuff because I'm trying to get your attention. As I did Jonah. Jonah tried to run and everywhere Jonah went, it was hell on everyone else. As a matter of fact, they told Jonah, Jonah, you get off the boat, man, because before you came, we was doing all right. But now you're here. You see, that's what happens when God has something for you to do, but you say they want to run. You're going to cause hell and turmoil on everybody else just because of what God wants you to do. Yes. 